Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you five hidden features found in GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10.12 which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course, before I get into that, I wanna direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here, as well as GIMP and Inkscape help articles, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in my GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy, and you can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting gimpschool.com. GIMP, of course, is a totally free photo editor and graphic design software. It's more so a photo editor than anything, and it's most similar to Photoshop. But GIMP is loaded with tons of features, and it can be hard to come across all of these features in your work. So I figured for today's tutorial, I would point out five hidden features that I found while working in GIMP. The first feature has to do with your Layers panel, and the Layers panel has tons of features in itself. But this feature is both a hidden feature and also a shortcut feature. So if I come over here to my layers panel, you'll see in this particular composition, I just have a single photo. And there's plenty of things I can do inside of my layers panel. I go over that in a couple other tutorials that cover layers. So I'll come over here and create a new layer. And I do just wanna name this soft light layer. Let's give it a color tag here. And we'll set the layer mode to soft light. And we'll just fill this in with white and I'll click okay. The first hidden feature is that when I hit the spacebar key, it's going to perform the same action I just did within my layers. So in this case, it's just gonna bring up the create a new layer dialog. So if I hit the spacebar key, here is the create a new layer dialog again. And we have some of the settings that were saved here. So we have the same layer name, the same layer mode, and the fill with color. And if I click OK, that will once again create this same layer. I will warn you guys, not all of the settings that you set previously when you created a new layer will still pop up the second time you try to create a new layer. So for example, if you change the width of your layer, the width will just revert back to the original width. And you can also see here that the color tag didn't transfer over either. So it's not going to bring over all of the previous settings from the last time you created a new layer in this case. But the spacebar shortcut key or hidden feature doesn't just apply to creating a new layer. It's going to apply to most of the actions that you perform inside of your layers panel. So for example, if I come over here and delete that new layer I just created, and then I hit the spacebar key, it's going to also delete that other layer that I was on, so my other active layer. And let me hit Control Z to undo that. Also, if I come over here and create a new layer group and then hit the spacebar key, that's gonna create a brand new layer group. And you can see in this case, it is a nested layer group. And I do have a GIMP help article that goes into great depth about GIMP layer groups. So I definitely recommend you check that out. And then another thing is if I click on this layer here, I can move my layer up or down in the stacking order. So if I move this up one, and then let me just move this down one. If I hit the spacebar key, it'll move it down one again. So let me just move this back up in the layer stacking order. Also, if I duplicate this layer and then I hit the space bar key, you'll see it'll just continue to duplicate this layer. And if you'll remember earlier when I hit the space bar key and it brought up the create a new layer dialog box, not all of the settings were the same. If you do just want to create the same layer again with all the same settings, use this duplicate layer shortcut here or this hidden feature with the space bar. And that's going to give you the exact same settings you had when you created that new layer the first time. So I'll hit Control Z to undo all that. The only feature this does not work for is the layer mask, but there is a workaround for that. So let's say I come over here and grab my ellipse tool. I'll draw an ellipse, right click on here, go to add layer mask, and under initialize layer mask too, I'll choose selection and click add. So that gives me a layer mask that is the shape of this ellipse I just drew. If I wanted to perform this same action on my image layer, I can click on this image layer, but when I hit the spacebar key, it's not going to add the layer mask to this, much like it does for all the other actions in here where it will just duplicate that action. Instead, all it did here was it just hid my layer, so let me unhide the layer. Instead, what I have to do here is shift click on this, and that will use the last settings I had for this layer mask on the layer mask of my main image. So I'll hit Control Z to undo that, and hit Control Shift A to deselect that. The next hidden feature found in GIMP is going to be that when you hit the Control D shortcut on your keyboard, that's going to duplicate your entire composition onto a brand new composition. So for this composition here, you'll see we have this layer group we created, we have the soft light layer with the layer mask, and we have the original forest image here. Let me just rename this forest and hit the enter key. Well, if I hit Control D, that is going to duplicate everything from that composition over here into a brand new composition. 
So as you can see here, we have a brand new tab with everything from that original composition still intact over here. So this is great when you're working on a complex project and you're not sure if your next action or your next few actions might ruin you know, all the progress that you did before. And you wanna test it out maybe on a brand new composition for whatever reason, that's just one use case. But this hidden feature is really a great way to quickly open up your entire composition into a brand new composition window and just work from there. But let me just come over here to another composition I created. So this one is a bit more complex. We have a few more layers in here as well as a bunch of paths as well. But let me come back over here to the layers panel. And if I hit control D, you'll see once again, that'll duplicate my entire composition onto a new tab. And if I come over to paths, you'll see all of my paths also were duplicated over here. The next hidden feature in GIMP has to do with modifier keys and selection areas. So if I come up here inside of my toolbox, you'll see I have my ellipse select tool selected here. And inside of my tool options for this tool, you can see I have four modes I can choose from for my selection area. So a lot of you are probably familiar with these selection modes. So we have replace the current selection, add to the current selection, subtract from the current selection and intersect with the current selection. And the replace the current selection is the default, but when I hover over each of these, you can see they all have modifier keys. And so when I hold the shift key, it's going to change the mode of my ellipse to add to the current selection. Some of you might be wondering, well, how is this a hidden feature? I've known about this all along. Well, the hidden feature actually comes into play when you hold the alt key and let's come over to a layer that has an object in it. So in this case, the large windmill layer. So this layer only contains this windmill and then everything else is transparency. If I alt click on this windmill layer, you'll see that will create a selection area here. And now let me come over to another layer. So here is a small windmill layer. If I alt click on this layer, it's only going to select the small windmill on this layer. However, now we can use our key modifiers as well as the alt key to start to combine these objects from different layers to create multiple selections. So now if I come over here to the large windmill layer and I hold the alt and the shift key and click on the large windmill, that will select both the large windmill and the small windmill, which are on two different layers. And if I scroll down, I can use another key modifier. So let's go with this photo here of the landscape on the bottom half of the image. So in this case, if I hold Alt and Control and then I click, you'll see that is going to subtract that landscape from these two windmills here. So I'll hit Control Z. Now if I hold Alt, Control and the Shift key and click on this, it's going to keep only the areas that intersect with one another. So that's going to be the bottom portion of the windmill and the top portion of the landscape here. I'll hit Control Shift A. The great thing about this hidden feature is that it also works with paths. So if I come over here to my paths dialog, I can do the same thing here. So I actually turned this windmill into a path when I was creating this. Same thing with the back windmill here. I also did one of the plane up here. This was the original size of the plane. So if I come down here to this windmill path, I'm gonna keep it hidden, but if I alt click on this path, you'll see that will also create a selection area here. And I can come up top here, so this is the smaller windmill. And if I alt shift click on this, it's going to select both of these using the paths that I drew earlier. So I'll hit control shift A to deselect that. The fourth hidden feature found in GIMP is that your transform tools can be used to transform more than just the layers in GIMP. So for example, if I come over here and grab my scale tool, which is of course a transform tool, and I come over here to my layers panel, I'll scroll up and let's go with the large windmill here in this photo. So if I click on the large windmill layer, that's going to decrease the size of this windmill. So it's going to scale it down. Of course, I can move it around and place it right here and then hit scale. So now we have a scaled down windmill. We can also perform these transformations on selections and paths. So that really opens up GIMP's functionality and allows you to do a lot of cool things. I'll show you a quick example here. So let's alt click on this large windmill layer like we did earlier. If I try to use the scale tool right now, nothing will happen to that selection area. It'll stay the same. The windmill will be scaled up though. So let me just hit reset and actually just exit out of here. However, if I come over here to my tool options under transform, I can change this from the layer to a selection. And now I can transform just the selection here. So you can see that my selection area has grown. I can also change where it's located like so. And I'll hit the scale button. Now we have a much larger windmill selection area. I'll create a new layer. We'll name this windmill object and change the mode to normal and we'll fill this 
with a transparent color and click OK. I'll hit Shift B to bring up my bucket fill tool and I'll just fill this in with black. Control Shift A to deselect that. And now we have this large windmill object. So as I mentioned, this can also be performed with paths. So if I come back to any of my transform tools so I can stick with the scale tool or I can go with something like the unified transform tool. And I'm going to change the transform option here to path. So we have layer selection and path. And then when I come over here to my paths dialog, let's unhide the windmill path that I created. And now with my unified transform tool selected, I'll click on this path. And now we can do a variety of things to this. We could scale it up. And if I hold the shift key, it'll scale it up with the same aspect ratio. I can also change the perspective of it using the perspective portion of the unified transform tool here. And I can also come up here and rotate this. So I'm just doing a bunch of random transformations. But I can rotate this anyway. Let's go with just right here and then hit transform. And now we have a totally transformed path. Of course, we can also use this hidden feature to do simple things like moving a path. So if you have a path placed right here, you can come over here, grab the move tool, change the mode here to path, and we can simply move this path anywhere on the page. And then of course, we can all click on the path. That'll turn this into a selection area, and we could go in here and fill this in with the color. The fifth and final hidden feature in GIMP that I'll cover for this tutorial is actually one that seems really obvious once you figure it out, but it's something that I didn't figure out on my own. It was pointed out to me by a viewer, and that is the ability to drag and drop your foreground or background color directly onto your canvas or your image without having to use something like the bucket fill tool. So for example, I still have this selection area here that I created from my transformed windmill path. If I wanted to fill this in, I have two options. I can hit Shift B, and use the bucket fill tool to fill this in with something like black, which is my current foreground color. Or I'll hit control Z. An even faster way to fill this in is to simply click and drag your foreground color over onto your canvas and drop this. So you'll see that'll automatically fill in my selection area with that black color. I'll hit control Z. Let me come over here and we'll choose a different foreground color and a different background color. So let's go with this red color. So I can do the same here with the red background color. I can just drag and drop it directly onto here and that will fill this in with that background color. I'll hit Control Z once again and then Control Shift A to deselect that selection area. I wanna point something else out about this hidden feature which is that the color will fill in the entire layer when there's no selection area on the canvas. So I'll come over here to my layers panel and let's just create a new layer and we'll name this color, hit enter. So if I drag and drop the blue onto here, it'll fill in the entire canvas area. I'll hit Control Z, our path is still unhidden here. So let me come over to the paths dialog and hide that and then come back over here to our layers panel. So the same of course applies for the background color. I'll hit Control Z again. On the other hand, if I already have a selection area in here, so let's say I have my ellipse tool and I'll just draw my ellipse and then I'll drag and drop this into here. Of course, that'll fill the ellipse in with this color and I'll hit Control Shift A. But another cool thing about this feature that was pointed out by that same viewer is that if you wanted to, for example, change the color of this ellipse shape after you've drawn it, all you have to do is make sure you're clicked on this layer, lock the alpha channel, and then I can come over here and drag and drop the background color anywhere on here, and it's going to change all of the pixels on this layer because the entire alpha channel has been locked. This works because whenever you lock the alpha channel of a layer, it's going to lock all of the transparent pixels on that layer. So the object in this case contains the only pixels on this layer. Everything else has been locked. And so when we drag and drop our background color directly onto the canvas, it's going to fill in only the pixels that are not transparent pixels. And that includes the semi-transparent pixels. And that's how we get a really nice final result like this with crisp edges. So some of you know that when you try to fill this in, for example, with the bucket fill tool, so I'll hit shift B and unlock my alpha channel. And let me also alt click on this. When I fill this in with the bucket fill tool and hit control shift A, you'll see there are a lot of red pixels that did not get filled in. And some of the red and blue pixels are actually interacting with one another and that's creating purple out here. And so you don't get nearly as nice of a final product and I'll hit control Z to undo this. And so again, here's the other method. I'll lock the alpha channel, click and drag the blue on here, zoom in and you can see that we get a really nice final result here. 
All right, so that's it for the five hidden features found in GIMP. Hopefully you liked this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for updates anytime I have a new tutorial. You can also check out any of my resources in the description of the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.